The discussion of Mandela's legacy continues after Beat the Press with a special presentation of Basic Black. Now we turn to Newtown, Connecticut, and a development that community has been dreading, the release of the 911 audio recordings from last year's mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. It was the media that fought to make them public, but whether they aired them was a different matter. A note of caution, we will play some of the recordings as they were reported. Newsrooms knew it would be a very controversial call. We will be very sensitive with what we do put on Fox News Channel. But really, no judicial editing or warnings to viewers could shelter anyone from what we now know was actually happening. We got 911. What's the location of the emergency? Sandy Hook School. I think there's somebody shooting in here. Along with Fox, CNN and CBS also aired select portions of the tapes. I believe they're shooting at the front, at the front glass. Something's okay. going on. CBS balanced that decision with the voices of Sandy Hook parents who objected to the release of the calls. Because I don't feel that the actual audio tapes serve any public interest necessarily. They don't teach us anything new. That reasoning prevailed at NBC, where Rahima Ellis explained her network's decision not to air the calls. When you look at the faces of those innocent people killed in less than six minutes, you understand why the release of the 911 calls is not only so sensitive for those who lost loved ones, but also for the entire Newtown community. Meanwhile, ABC put out word that the network would not air any of the 911 calls either. This is ABC World News. But then ABC went so far as to ignore the fact that the recordings were even released, perhaps the least defensible of any of the decisions made that day. Well, I hate to be cold about this, but I, you, you got to release them. And I think the transcripts are one thing, but, you know, hearing that and hearing is believing for a lot of people. I mean, I, th I think what ABC de did was egregious. I can't even imagine not, not acknowledging that the, that the, uh, the tapes had been released. And Susie, you actually spent four months there working for ABC as a producer afterwards. And the other thing is that you get close to the people, and I know you, you did. But I also don't think it's the journalist's responsibility to take into consideration, bear with me, the feelings of the people involved. I mean, what about the reporting we did on that woman a few weeks ago who was killed by that student, uh, Colleen Ritzer? I mean, we ter reported terrible details about what happened to her. It's the nature of the business. Well, to some degree, to some extent, I agree, right? I mean, full disclosure, I used to work for Diane Sawyer. So yeah. um, I, I maybe wouldn't have made the same decision, but um, I think... The thing here is I did spend a lot of time with these families, sort of on and off for four months, and this is still a very fresh wound for them. And they have really made themselves very available to the public in this process. And, you know, we know a lot of details about what happened that day without having to hear this specific audio. So I'm not sure I agree completely that there was probative news value here. I think there... I think they should have been released by the judge. Certainly, that's a separate issue. I think journalists have to be able to review these materials and make sure there isn't something that we're missing about the police response mm -hmm. or um, sort of those issues. But, you know, in terms of playing them, I think it's right to be judicious. I mean, we were, as a network, very judicious about showing the moment of impact on 9-11. We mm -hmm. made decisions not to do that. There is precedent for sort of taking victims feelings into account. And I would hate to think that one of these families would turn on CNN and sort of be wallpapered with this noise. Yeah, I think no. yeah. you have to That's think about true. it carefully. I mean, I, I, I don't want to speak for you, Emily. I don't think you meant to say that we shouldn't consider the feelings of the victims' families, no. because we certainly do consider yeah, do. them. But it's not prohibitive. It's not necessarily a determinative factor. I respectfully disagree with the Sandy Hook parent that was quoted in that piece. There was news value was. here. Uh, Perhaps not much more than just to illustrate the amazing calm and composure of mm. both the personnel inside the school mm. and the responders. Now, uh, my news organization did not air any clips with gunshots or screaming and shame on any organization that did. I don't think that was appropriate. Uh, but this is public information. It does tell the story. And do we want to remember and continue to pay attention to what happened at Sandy Hook? I think the answer is yes, albeit in the most sensitive way possible. Mm. Well, first of all, um, I think we should praise the Associated Press for fighting the uh, government officials who tried to prevent 
uh, public records from being released. Those records absolutely should have been released. They should have been out months ago. But as we've said, that's a separate issue. Once they're released, what do you do with them? Uh, I agree with John. I think that uh, in every instance, and I listened, I think I listened to all of them, uh, it really showed mm -hmm. uh, police, dispatchers, people inside the school, uh, just cool, at their best. Uh, I didn't hear anyone screaming. I wouldn't have put that on the air. Uh, I did, certainly didn't hear any children's voices. I wouldn't have put that on the air. Uh, I thought what we did here was appropriate. Maybe it's a little bit better when you post them on the web and people can decide whether to listen to them or not. Uh, but I certainly think this was news, and, and I don't have a problem with the decision to use yeah, it. Just to follow up on that, some of the newspaper accounts, one of them said that the voices were hysterical and that the uh, responders sounded overwhelmed. That not at true. all. Not yeah, at so all. So that's another reason for releasing. It. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there, I think all of this is uh, is is really well said. Uh, and pick up what uh, on what you had mentioned there, Susie. Uh, the the judge in this particular case, in addition to the Associated Press for pushing this, it's not easy to be seen as the insensitive and cold and callous press that uh, yes, we want to have this out there. Um, but it's so important that this information remain in the in the public sphere. The judge was under similar pressure. Uh, certainly, the prosecutors there w wanted to make the argument that somehow that uh, public sensitivity should outweigh the uh, the public's right to know here. So I, I think we go back. I am. Uh, I, I, we should be very thankful that the judge had the courage to do this, that the AP had the courage to uh, fix it. And as far as the news side goes, I don't think there is a right or wrong answer here. Those, those news organizations that thought uh, the right answer for their audience was not to run it, ABC's decision, others who thought the right answer was to run it with excerpts or even completely. The great thing about all of this is they had the ability to make the editorial judgment themselves, and that goes back to the AP and the judge's decision. So on balance, um, I, I think this has been a very good exercise for everyone to go through. And we learn a lot about each news organization um, by the way they decided to handle it. That says a lot about their own culture and their well, own values. What about the issue that this appears to be a crime that was so horrendous that it it has lifted into a category all its own because I don't think we would have had the same hesitancy with some of these other mass shootings in Aurora, Oregon. Right. I mean, there's been so children. many of them. Why this? It's children. The children. I think it's children, but I think also these parents have been really strong advocates for themselves. I think unlike a lot of those other mass shootings, they had this sort of un unfortunate history to draw from, and they really banded together. They created this advocacy group, Sandy Hook Promise. So their voices are being heard much more ardently than in these previous cases. I think you're right that that doesn't mean we should listen to them, but that's why we're hearing them. 